Welcome to Corium Concepts. Thanks for stopping by the channel today. If I can leave you some value, please leave a like, comment, and most importantly, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and move along in the analytics. And we also have a promotion contest going on right now that once we reach a thousand subscribers, we're going to give away a nice bundle of NFTs. I'll explain more on that in another show because I had a lot to cram in here. So let's just get right into it. Checking in with Smart Stake Analytics, Corium Network, total staked 186,909,000. So nice to see a lot's moved over on the bridge since the last airdrop. Zen Lounge posted uh, there's a vote coming up to increase the active val validator number from 32 to 40. Will be started on June 8th. You will have five days to vote. We will post the proposal link when it is ready. So keep your eyes out on that. Uh, this will be vote or proposal number two. The uh, first proposal was a quick one uh, as the vote window was fairly small, I believe just hours. Uh, so that was a vote or proposal that was made to extend or increase the voting period to this current five days that we have now. And it was agreed on 99.9% .9 unanimously. So that's a good sign that uh, things are starting to develop. The community is going to start becoming engaged on the direction of the Corium network. So I'm check it in with that. Uh, you can see here, we kind of keep an eye on Zen Lounge here for a while, but he has uh, officially passed over and the first to pass over 1,000 unique delegates. So congratulations to him and his community. That uh, is nice to see. Bitrus in second place with 716. Cosmo Station 645. 007 Corium at 545. And then it starts to drop off significantly from there. So you can see uh, some of the other validators uh, certainly don't have near as many unique delegates. delegates. So congratulations to him. He's got a big community and they're clearly supporting his validator. Checking in on the rankings due by voting power. Got Cosmo Station still at number one at 18.6 million. Bitrude Zen Lounge swapping back and forth between second and third place. 007 Corium at 9.7 million and in fifth informal systems at 8.5 million. APR is currently at 33.48 and 36.5% of the tokens are currently staked. And checking in with the best returns, Smart Stake still has their 0% fees uh, promotion on, so they're still at number one spot for that. Net APR to APY is 33.5, 39.6. Corium close behind. Bit true in third. Solo Nation in fourth and bite stake in fifth remember everybody it's not just important to have the high rewards low fees make sure you spread out your delegation so you're not exposed to any one validators risk of being slashed or downtime or anything of that nature so be safe out there make sure you understand uh, how to do this properly for the benefit of you and the network itself. If you have any questions, reach out. The community is more than willing to help you. Many of our validators are very easy to interact with on social media. If you have any questions, they will certainly answer them for you. And checking in with the current signing. Uh, I see Citadel 1, Stake Cito. Uh, they're having a little bit of slipping here this morning. That's in the last eight hours. And the average for the last 30 days, see Core Heroes, Stake Cito, Silk Nodes, Informal Systems, Zen Lounge, uh, have all had small hiccups in the last 30 days. Again, these aren't big problems. Statistics just point us to these things, but uh, the system as a whole, excellent, and everybody's getting really good rewards no matter how you look at it. Checking in the prices, Corium's 
taken some pressure here the last few days, sitting at 15.17 cents. Sologenic 11.713. XRP holding that 50 cent level at 51.857. Bitcoin 26.457. It recovered fairly good from that downwards pressure the other day. Total crypto market cap is 1.069 trillion. Gold $1,954. Silver 23.76. DXY is 103.585. MMRI is up a little bit to the 243 mark, starts getting around that 250 mark. Uh, I would suspect you're going to see some and hear some rumblings from the, the markets in the news. Fabio posted here, Wave 2 grants is fi in final screening stage. The consensus hackathon just ended yesterday. Additional partnerships ongoing, dApps soon. So that's really exciting because... Um, Currently, there's there's no real use cases for Corium. It's just uh, airdropped and minted, rewarded, and parked. So uh, once we start getting some dApps and some use cases for Corium, the velocity starts to increase, and uh, you, you know the velocity has to be there for the price to go up. So it's awesome news. In fact, this is really big news. So just a small little title but it's really going to have a big impact in the days and weeks ahead as far as the movement of corium and uh, people's desire to use it legal issues surrounding the industry uh, i won't dive into this much uh, now it's been covered fairly good but uh, coinbase uh, gary gensler here shares that alleged coinbase's alleged failures deprive investors of critical protections including rule books that prevent fraud and manipulation, proper disclosure, safeguards against conflicts of interest, and routine inspection by the SEC. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission charged Coinbase with operating its crypto trading asset platform as an unregistered national securities exchange broker and clearing agency and for failing to register the offer and sale of its crypto asset staking as a surface program. And then also Binance is obviously having issues. The SEC asked the court to grant a temporary restraining order to freeze the assets tied to Binance US. I can't stress this enough. If you got funds on Binance, get it out of there. Um, I'm not saying I agree with the SEC and what they're doing, but it doesn't matter because uh, you, know, you got to get your funds somewhere safe. Robinhood to delist tokens named in the SEC lawsuit against Binance and Coinbase. This includes Solana, Polygon, and Cardano, and a whole lot more, guys. This is uh, big. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with this. So Binance faces another lawsuit in the U.S. SEC, files a case in District of Columbia. Uh, so, yeah, they're vi violating securities laws, too, but in these charges... Um, there is some criminal charges named. So that is a little bit different than the Coinbase situation. So that's why they're going to seize assets. And uh, it will be treated differently. So again, if you got money, funds tied up in, in Binance, get it to safe, safety now. And here, Golden Ratio Staking Validator uh, posted this here. The Alabama show cause order alleges Coinbase violates the securities law by offering its staking rewards pro program accounts to Alabama residents without registration to offer these securities. Staking occurs when investors lock their crypto assets for a set period to help support the operation of a blockchain. In return, the investor is promised more crypto assets. Under Coinbase's staking rewards plan program, Investors deposit crypto assets with Coinbase, which then facilitates the staking of these assets on the blockchain. The program is offered to the public and advertises a return of up to 6% on investments. Coinbase pool investors' crypto assets and employs a team to generate staking rewards. Coinbase takes a cut of those profits before sharing them with investors. The SC action does not prohibit Coinbase from offering staking as a service, so long as it complies with Alabama's laws. The purpose of registering an offer and sale of securities in part is to ensure that investors receive all material information needed to evaluate the risks of participating in an investment, including a staking rewards program. 
So it's just, you know, people want institutional money here. You're going to have to deal with institutional type regulations and policies. You can't have the best of both worlds. So um, obviously don't like it for a lot of reasons, but clearly see why it's happening. Bob Ross had a great thread here. Interesting timeline of events. Republican bill proposed to regulate crypto. CZ Binance throws support behind pro-crypto Ron DeSantis. And then SEC charges Binance. Coincidence or a strategic political move? We cannot rule that possibility out. He goes on to say the House GOP's bill aims to provide clear rules for crypto. A pathway to registration and allowing crypto securities to be traded on ATS, a win-win for blockchain companies and investors. Pro-crypto Governor DeSantis endorses CZ Binance has the right idea. If people want to do Bitcoin, they should be able to do Bitcoin. Regulatory balance is key, not enforcement overreach. Binance, the world's largest crypto trading platform, now faces charges from the SEC. Serious allegations, but this is a fair and unbiased action, or is it a political play? The charges include operating unregistered exchanges and misrepresented trading controls. These are serious allegations, but we must remember one is innocent until proven guilty. Remember, crypto is global. Unjust and groundless regulatory enforcement in one country may simply push innovation to friendlier shores. Balanced regulation is pivotal to sustaining the health of the blockchain ecosystems, ensuring the U.S. will not miss the train. As we await further developments, let's remember the importance of clear, fair, supportive regulation for blockchain innovation. It's not just about enforcement, it's about fostering growth. The future of blockchain innovation lies in our ability to work together regulators and innovators alike let's create an environment that supports growth not stifles it that's absolutely right it's a great thread by bob and uh you know we we have to work with the regulators there's no way around that so the sooner we do that and and get uh, good regulations out there the better it is for the whole industry what's going on in the u.s it's its own set of problems it's you know roiled with uh, corruption and and uh clearly clearly that's affecting uh policy it's uh, unfortunate but i think we've all seen the technology leave the u.s uh for the last several years singapore uae uh have have benefited greatly from that and will continue to do so i think um, they have their regulations in place and the framework is there. People can see it, understand, and build within it. So that's where you're going to see the growth. And that's why I got my eyes on that. Brad Garlinghouse says, if it wasn't already clear, it should be now. Chair Gensler's at laughable pro-innovation stance, as he said today, is exactly the opposite. What this also tells me is that the SEC is throwing lawsuits at the wall and hoping they distract from the agency's FTX debacle. It's embarrassing to watch an unelected bureaucrat flail like this to mask the fact that he and his agency don't have the power that he so desperately craves. No one is fooled. It's, uh, those are bold words from a CEO of a company that's uh, currently at the tail end, hopefully, of, of uh, a long long lawsuit so it's going to be interesting to see um, the news come out this uh, tone from Brad certainly suggests he's uh, feeling like he's in a very strong position anyways here's a great thread from Forbol on Corium we've prepared a blog post to help you start unveil the credible incredible features of Corium We've explained why you should pay utmost attention to this groundbreaking blockchain technology. So I'll uh, post a link to that. Uh, great little blog info on uh, Corium. Ripple also uh, said we're excited to share our 2022 Ripple Impact Report. Again, we'll dive into this uh, a little more later, but... Um, yeah, a lot to see here. Um, 
just a little bit too much for this morning's update, but Ripple Impact launched in 2018 with the goal of being a force of positive change for both people and the planet. From industry leading sustainability commitments to funding and innovative financial inclusion programs to empowering our employees to make a difference. This report highlights some of the milestones Ripple Impact reached in 2022 and the partners that helped make it all possible. You can download that report here. I'll put this link in the description of the video also. We say when, says the Zum Wallet Hook Store Preview. The idea an on ledger hook installed on, the, on an account accompanied by an X app. Install the X app, get the hook, install the hook, and get the X app. A convenient UI UX for smart contracts living on the ledger for your setup, config, and affected transaction details. Here's a quick look at it. So yeah, a lot of changes happening around uh, the Zum ecosystem there. So uh, he also says, and I, I can't, couldn't agree more with this statement, it just hits me that it feels this is the most exciting time for the XRP Ledger and XRPL protocol since I joined the XRPL ecosystem. And uh, I couldn't agree more. Like I said, uh, so much going on right now. The, the growth is uh, amazing to, to watch. Stably says, reflecting on the events of May 2023, it was a month filled with dynamic and unpredictable developments from market fluctuations to notable advancements in blockchain and cryptocurrency. There were several highlights worth mentioning. May 1st, Coinbase launches international exchange with Bitcoin and Ethereum perpetual futures. Alibaba Cloud and its partners unlock rapid metaverse deployment on an avalanche for millions of cloud clients. May 6th, Deuce Finance lose, loses 6 million following a stablecoin hack. May 9th, PayPal holding near, nearly 1 billion worth of crypto for their customers. Binance to bring Bitcoin and NFTs to marketplace through ordinal support. May 11th, MetaMask rolls out our, rolls out ETH purchases via PayPal to US users. OKX and Havoy both integrate Unisat for easy access to BRC20 tokens. That's the wallet I use for my Ape Runners and uh, works very well. Tether to invest up to 15% of its profits in Bitcoin. Ripple takes on the crypto custody market with the purchase of Medico. Jack Dorsey, to be determined, announces a new Web5 toolkit. And May 19th, MicroStrategy looking at Bitcoin ordinals for app development, says Michael Saylor. And in the last week of May, we got Hotbit Exchange, Hulse Operation urges users to withdraw funds. Hong Kong lets retail investors trade crypto in its new rules. Stably launches USD as the first BRC20 stablecoin on the Bitcoin network. Visa, Microsoft, and others join Brazilian CBDC pilot. Beijing releases white paper for Web3 innovation and development. Arbitrum-based uh, Jimbo's protocol hacked, losing $7.5 million in Ether. Binance considers allowing traders to secure collateral, collateral at banks. Binance lays off non-performers amid shrinking market share. And Hong Kong-based First Digital announces USD stablecoin. Busy month. This uh, never a dull moment in the digital asset space. Uh, Zeev's posted here. Uh, unlock the secrets of social finance coin with Michael Meyer. Join our Twitter, Twitter space AMA. And uh, their Web3 voice presents Zeev Tech Talk. Introduction to social finance coin. NFT Marketplace and Corium Validator, the Rise community-owned smart contract ran. Escrow is growing by the day over the next week. I see us being halfway at our goal for reward distributions to begin. Can't say where rewards are distributed except back to the Rise ecosystem to power the Rise. Members know all the community funds are distributed and will be eligible to vote on many things. So you can see here, 143,120 core in the community escrow. 
it's really exciting watching this community grow from uh, just a seed. When I came across it, it was much more to that, uh, to uh, Rise, obviously, at that time, because he's been putting many hours and resources into it when I ran into him. But at that time, a lot of these ideas were just uh, seeds in my mind. He showed me a few glimpses, some glimpses at a few of them, but uh, over the months now, I've seen a lot of these things come to pass and grow, and it's exciting watching his marketplace uh, just start to take off here now. He's also doing a giveaway over the next 72 hours, giving away one Homies on the Block NFT. They earn you many things. Check out their Twitter and read up on them, he says. And uh, I don't know if this is the one you win, but uh, that is definitely uh, a prize worth getting. I, I got one a couple weeks ago actually and uh was a, i was excited i wanted to get one of the first 100 and i i just snuck in there and then blockchain homies themselves have a contest going with 1750 h bar who's ready for the first part of the puzzle to drop later today check in on rise's website it's constantly updating it so make sure you uh get yourself a profile set up here Be, get active within the community there's always something going on here you can check out the marketplace the launch pad check it out here here's the links to all this stuff book a call with him talk about uh, becoming a member at rise and the stella forum nfts it'll blow your mind and it's uh, definitely worth the time for you to do that check it out you'll understand what all the hype is about here and you want to get involved not financial advice of course but uh, they're building something special here, and I'm pretty sure once you talk to them, you'll want to be part of that. Bitcoin Ordinals Alpha had a great Twitter space yesterday. Uh, you can see over 6,000 people tuned in. Ape Runners are doing some uh, amazing networking and community building. And it's, again, exciting to see a project uh, start up and, and take off and, and absolutely crush it. Here's take a look at Magic Eden, at just some of the artwork available on the secondary market. Great project. You can see they're getting very close to that one Bitcoin total volume. And that definitely uh, has been a goal of the team. Uh, it is known that once you cross that one Bitcoin volume, that a lot of eyes start looking at your project. So exciting to see. Be watching that in the days ahead. And uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely check out the Ape Runners Tokenomics and Discord. It'll, uh, it'll impress you. And I put together a little uh, video here for them. You might have seen it already, but we'll use it to close out today's show. Really appreciate all your support. Please hit that like button. Give me some comments, good, bad, otherwise, suggestions, whatever you feel like. It's there to interact with me. I try and respond as much as I can. YouTube's a little goofy on how those comments get to me, but um, I do go through them when they get to me. Uh, they mean a lot. I appreciate it. Peace and prosperity to all.
How do you go from this tranquility to that violence? I usually take the Ferrari. 